In this video, I want to look at some basic examples of working with gravitational potential energy. Now, we're going to be looking for the change in gravitational potential energy. And I just want to think about that for a moment before we go straight into the questions. So, let's imagine that a ball is being dropped. So, here is the ball. And this is where it's being dropped from. And this is where it ends up. OK, after some seconds. Now, when you look at the change in gravitational potential energy, we're looking at um, the energy that is lost from this point to this point, or potentially gained if it's going from here to here. So if it is dropping, then it is energy that is lost potential energy that's lost, and if it is going upwards, then it is energy that is being gained. Now, you could think of this as um, the ground being here. So maybe the ball is dropped from a height, and then I catch it, like so, OK? Or you could think of the floor as being here. OK, so the ball lands on the floor. Either way, the change in gravitational potential energy will be the same. So because you're looking at that change, it doesn't matter which scenario you really think of it as. So in quite often, when we look at these problems to do with GPE, um, we decide on working from one point as being ground level. So at that point, the GPE is going to be zero because the height is zero. And so that eases the calculations. So let's take a look at the first uh, problem that we've got here. A lift of mass 750 kilos ascending a vertical distance of 20 meters. So it would be the mass 750 times by g times by h, which is 20. So 750 times 20, so 15,000, and that's g, which if we plug in g as 9.8, we would have 147,000, and that's joules. OK? So because it is a lift that is ascending a vertical distance, so going from one point upwards to another, then this is energy that is gained, that is put into the system. How about for question number two? A cyclist of mass 70 kilos descending a vertical distance of four metres. So we would have m times g times h, which is four. So 70 times 4 is 280. So we've got 280G. So 280 times 9.8 is 2,744 joules. Now, because the cyclist is descending, that means that that is energy that is lost. So that um, is gravitational potential energy that is lost from the system. For number three, a stone of mass 48 grams falling a vertical distance of 172 centimetres. Now, the point of this question is to make sure that we're putting in the correct units into our formula. The mass needs to be in kilos. The height needs to be in metres. So we have 48 grams, which is 0.048 kilos, times by g times by h, which is 1.72 metres. So 1.72 times 0.048. So 0.08256g. We're going to multiply that by 9.8. And we get 0.809088 joules. And of course, you could round that to three significant figures if you wanted to. But 
that would be uh, a vertical distance. So it's falling that vertical distance. And so that is energy that is lost.